So I've heard many of you would like to learn how to code. And in this video, I'll try to rewind back in time to answer a question. How am I going to learn how to code in 2022? Assuming I forgot everything. Before I started college, I had zero experience in anything science related, especially computer science. It was extremely hard at the beginning. But since then, I've made a couple of decisions that hopefully made me a decent software engineer. And it's been seven years. No, 10 years if I'm counting college. If I went back in time, the first thing I would ask myself is, do I like problem solving? The simplest indicator, and may I just remind you, just an indicator, would be, what do you do if something breaks? Do you immediately call for help or are you trying to fix it yourself? If the answer is you try to fix it yourself, you might like problem solving. If not, that's fine too. You can become a good programmer without the love for problem solving. The same as you can make a great bread as a baker without the particular love for baking. But then there's a question, where's the fan in that? So being a developer usually, not always, means that you're one of the two. So are you a front-end developer or back-end developer? There are also many other things you can do as a software developer, but there's the main one. I know many of you have this dilemma inside, should I pick where front end? Should I pick back end? What's the best choice? And there I would say it doesn't matter. When you're stuck making a decision, you're being stuck. If you make the decision and it turns out after a couple of months that you've made the worst choice, you can still go back and make the right choice. And you wouldn't know that if you didn't make this first choice in the first place. Does it make sense? Whatever you choose, it makes you go forward with your life and with you as a programmer. Short story here, I had many hardcore backend friends that were sworn that only backend and backend forever, nothing else. Frontend is just playing with colors and it's just for kids and designers. And then I introduced them with frontend frameworks. And actually they became a full stack developers and most of them primarily work with frontend nowadays. It's not just playing with colors. So assuming you pick the site, the next thing I would do if I were to start learning to code again, I would learn how to learn. Yeah, it, it's kind of abstract, but let me explain. For me, learning from books was a waste of time. Well, I was given so many books and people expected of me to learn the complex algorithms, structures, etc., etc. from a book. When I'm a terrible reader, I'm exceptionally, I cannot focus, I cannot imagine things that are written in a book. That's not for me. That's why I'm proposing to make yourself a test. If you think you're learning the most from books, that's fine. I would suggest to make this test anyway, because when it comes to programming, it's a little bit different. Your brain works in a different way. It's more technical. It's more like practice heavy. You need to practice a lot to learn it the craft properly. So making a test is nothing too extreme. You'll definitely know what's for you. And maybe you'll learn programming quicker. The test involves you learning something programming related from different sources, from a book, not for me, but it may be for you, from a video tutorial, from a written tutorial, and from a starter project. And bear in mind, you need to start only one thing at a time. Don't do th two things from a book. Don't do two things from a video. Don't do the same to start a project. Because there is a good reason not to do so. People often are stuck in something called tutorial hell or tutorial loop. It may discourage you when you try to learn something and you're getting no results. It might be really frustrating and it might even result in you stopping to wanting to learn how to program. I think it's not something that you want. My suggestion is avoid the tutorial hell, whatever it's called, and be persistent and consistent of doing everything once. In my case, the thing that clicked the most for me was the starter project. I started this job at the second year and truth be told, I learned there the most because for me, the thing that clicked was a starter project. Learning curve was so much easier than from the books. So take your time, don't rush things, don't be so hard on yourself because at the end, it doesn't matter if you learn how to program in two weeks, two months, we all do the same work. Right. So the next question I get a lot is what programming language I should start with? What's the best one to learn? As an experienced programmer, I would highly, highly suggest to avoid those two languages, Python 
in JavaScript. And I know that might be shocking, but hear me out. They are popular, they are called beginner friendly, and you can get a high paying job by learning them. But they are not a good template languages. Template language is something I call the language which syntax, so how the language actually looks and functions, is a similar to every other programming language there is. By learning the, the good template language, you can then easily translate to any other languages there is. Python and JavaScript are breaking the, those rules more than any other programming language. JavaScript lacks typing, which is common in every other languages, mostly, yeah. On the other hand, Python al already has types, but is very loose with them. But Python, uh, the structure of the language uh, is relying on indentations instead of brackets, which are mostly used in every other programming languages. Also, Python is not very fast. It's commonly used, but it's not that fast. I've worked with Python. It's, it's friendly, it's nice, but I wouldn't recommend to start with that. It's too easy and I wouldn't pick too easy at, as my first programming language. And in my opinion, learning something different, something with the proper syntax and proper typing would be a lot more beneficial in the long term than learning something that's basically easy. When it comes to JavaScript, um, I know mostly all the internet is running on JavaScript, but don't get me wrong. I write almost everything in JavaScript, partially. I write everything in TypeScript, which is basically decorated JavaScript. A JavaScript with types, classes, interfaces, enumerators, stuff that I must have in, in a programming language in order to use it. So if you want to learn something JS related, and sometimes people confuse JS with TS, so JavaScript and TypeScript, I would learn TypeScript instead because you can write JavaScript in TypeScript, but you can not use TypeScript in JavaScript. And if you learn TypeScript, you, you already know JavaScript and it's not going the other way around. If you don't like TypeScript, my other pick would be PHP, which is a very solid programming language and it has everything that I require of a good template language. And on top of that, almost 78% of the whole internet is running on PHP, which is a lot you'll definitely find a job in that. But remember that picking a programming language is not like you committing yourself for life. You can change it any time you want, right? You know that. Please pick a good template language. If you want to change later something, you, if you want to switch from PHP to TypeScript, like I did, you can do it with ease. You can just, okay, here I have classes and here I have classes. Here I have dependence injection, here I have dependence injection which is lacking in Python, by the way. After you have solid foundation with a good template language, you can start using Python and that will be also fine. Knowing programming language is not enough in 2022. Not many job offers are asking only for them. Many, if not all of them, are mentioning something called framework. Framework is a set of generic functionalities, components and tools neatly packed into one package. We use them because, let's be honest, no one likes to implement routing in their app for the fifth or sixth times in a row. You copy that functionality, wrap it as a framework and let other people use it. That's what framework is. If you see somewhere and while searching for job offers, vanilla something, vanilla JS, vanilla PHP or something, the term vanilla, I will read it to you, vanilla is a term describing something in its pure unchanged form. If you want to find a job with pure PHP, for example, you need to search for something vanilla PHP. So the last thing, I've watched similar videos to this one. It's not original content whatsoever. I saw that many of those people are telling you what to do rather than not what not to do, what to avoid. And they are giving you this direction uh, a certain direction, which I cannot agree with. As hard as we developers try, we cannot forget what we already know. It's impossible to recommend something without our current knowledge. We cannot forget what we know. We'll be the same uh, as you are when starting over. We wouldn't know anything. I want you to discover everything on your terms and learn in a process, because this is what essentially makes a programmer a programmer, finding out the path, finding out the solution, 
oh, in tech terms, I try to give you a framework not a finished implementation. That's it, my friends. If you learned something, make sure to like this video. And if you like this kind of content, so programming, me building startups in public, tech in general, make sure to subscribe, leave a like, comment, anything that helped me with algorithm so other people can see what I do. Yeah, that would be great. So my name is Luke and see you in the next video.